I'm Michelle Vaccarello, Senior Digital Editor for Pharmaceutical Manufacturing and PharmaQVD.com, and we're here today at the Institute for Molecular Medicine in Trinity College with Celex. Vivian Williams, the CEO, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Um, first, can you tell us how the Celex platform works? Sure, no problem. Basically, what we do is we try and mimic a human capillary in plastic. So what that means is we have a biochip with a series of capillaries in it that we can pre-coat with different adhesion molecules uh, that would mimic different uh, microenvironments. So for example, an inflammatory situation, we would coat it with VCAM, for example, and be able to pump whole, bl whole blood or um, isolated cell samples through the capillary and investigate cell adhesion, migration, transmigration under continuous flow conditions. Uh, we can also see and culture endothelial cells in there, bringing it one step closer uh, to, the, to the in vivo microenvironment. And I think in terms of our customer base, which is primarily uh, pharmaceutical and biotech at the moment, one of the things that they like most about the platform is the ability for it to um, be used as a translational tool. So to be able to cross that bridge between late stage preclinical development and phase one clinical trials um, where they use an awful lot of samples from donors which are treated ex vivo with their lead compounds and they really get a, a sense of how that drug is going to interact um, in a phase one clinical trial. Great, and how did the Celex company come about? It's a spin out from Trinity College. Um, it started uh, officially, it was incorporated in October 2004 and uh, remained a shelf company until March 2006. So we're really up and running just over three years now. But within those three years, we already have an impressive list of customers, which include um, AstraZeneca, Sanofi Aventis, Pfizer, Amgen. National Institute of Health, uh, Servier in Paris, uh, and a number of other uh, biotech companies. Um, we're seeing uh, uh, an increase lately from uh, the uh, of interest from the academic community, um, so particularly the uh, universities in the U.S., uh, which I think stems from. Um, the recent announcement of Obama's stimulus package mm -hmm. where we're getting a lot of requests for quotations on <laughs> platforms, uh, which is good news for us. Um, so we've uh, rebranded the system to make it more user-friendly for the academic sector. Um, but I suppose getting back to the, the uh, startup of the company, it was uh, co-founded by myself and uh, Dimitri Kashinin, our CTO, Chief Technical Officer. Um, and also some of the uh, two of the professors from the uh, from Trinity College, Professor of Medicine Dermot Kelleher and Professor of Physics Igor Schwetz. Okay, um, and the Celex platform eliminates the need for animal trials. Can you just talk about that? A little sure, bit? sure. Um, a lot of our customers um, uh, that use our system at the moment are based at the very late stage development preclinical stage. They're looking at. They're involved in lead optimization, uh, lead identification phase of, of drug discovery. Uh, and what that means is that they would normally use quite a lot of animal models at that stage. Our system is used in, in, uh, as a pre-screen, but also as a, a, in parallel with a lot of their animal models. As a pre-screen, it can eliminate quite a number of animal mm -hmm. models where we can. it's more physiologically relevant because we use human samples, primary cells, which are mm -hmm. traditionally very difficult to work with. But we use uh, to... to uh, uh, we use primary samples from, from donors that uh, have produced consistently good results. Um, and, you know, having that data rather than obviously samples from, from mice, for example, is much more physiologically relevant. Mm -hmm. So as a pre-screen using primary cell samples, it's, it's an incredibly valuable asset for a lot of the pharma companies. So it definitely can, can eliminate a lot of the, the animal models, uh, particularly inflammation models um, that, that have dated back number of years that, that are, are quite archaic, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, that, that would be one of the things. And then secondly, I think, in parallel with some of the animal models, traditionally uh, there would have been some experiments that just wouldn't have been possible with uh, old 
parallel plate flow chambers or perfusion chambers, um, where, which used quite a, a lot of volume. Our system is a microfluidic system, which means that we can use micro, microliter sample volumes, so very small volumes. Um, and when you're dealing with mice, for example, that becomes ex in incredibly important. Um, so from that point of view, um, it's, it has a niche application in, in that field. So how are the majority of your big pharma clients using the platform? Um, a lot of them, as, as I said, would be at the lead identification, lead optimization phase. Um, a lot of them would have maybe tens to hundreds of compounds in their labs where they've run them through a battery of, of static well plate experiments and they're looking for that extra edge to enable them to pick the winner to put into clinical trials mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. um, and because our system works with uh, primary samples incredibly well um, it really does that give a lot of the pharma companies and an, uh, I suppose a, a head start on uh, whether it's going to work in clinical trials or not. Um, and I think that's really one of the uh, advantages of our system. And that's really where we're seeing it used the most at the moment. One of the most popular applications that we have is for thrombosis, um, for platelet adhesion studies, and anything now with whole blood. Previously, um, two to three years ago, a lot of our customers were using isolated cell samples. So they would take a sample from a, a donor and then take out the specific cell of interest. The only problem with that is very often those cell types, T cells, B cells, and so on, act very differently in uh, in whole blood versus when they're you know taken out of whole blood because mm -hmm. uh, there's different factors there. So. Um, viscosity to name one and um, the activation of certain cell surface receptors so because of that we've seen a, a transition now where a lot of our customers have moved from doing isolated cell sample studies to whole blood studies um, and investigating their particular cell of interest but within the whole blood environment okay. um, and what do you think about or what do you think the future of Celex holds I mean, what kind of trends have you seen as you started? I think the, the, the biggest trend that we've seen over the last um, 6 to 12 months is the movement of the platform um, towards phase 1 clinical trials. Um, a lot of our customers now feel that the, the data can be extremely uh, valuable as, a, as translational data, you know, mm -hmm. relating their preclinical work to their phase 1 clinical trial. So um, in, in an uh, in an effort to support that, we're moving towards making our chips um, a standardised chip, for example, that can be that will be pre-coated and sold pre-coated with adhesion molecules already attached. And in, in that regard, we're we're talking with uh, a, a number of companies about um, implementing strict quality control in relation mm -hmm. to that. So, for example, you don't have researchers then coating with an um, adhesion molecule from several different suppliers. It comes from one source and is calibrated and quality control and tested uh, because for phase one clinical trials it absolutely must be. Mm -hmm. um, it has to have that uh, quality control stamp on it. Mm -hmm. And your facilities are here at Trinity College. Do you do a lot of collaboration work with other universities around the world? Yeah, we work with a lot of universities. Um, I suppose uh, primarily the, uh, the some of the key collaborations we have, of course, are in Ireland uh, with Trinity College and with um, University College Dublin. Uh, with Trinity College, we have a, a number of projects ongoing, which include um, the development of applications with the biochips as they stand at the moment, um, in addition to working with the Department of Medicine and Clinical uh, medicine and physics with uh, a project on nanowires, for example, mm -hmm. and magnetic sensors embedded in the chips. Um, we've, were, we've We were recently awarded a grant with uh, University College Dublin, an FP7 grant from the European Commission uh, for a melanoma project to investigate melanoma in, in our chips with a number of other partners working mm -hmm. in different areas of expertise, of course. Um, and that will start June 1st this year. Um, in terms of outside Ireland, we, um, oh sorry, also with University College Dublin, we have another, we're part of a, an all-Ireland uh, uh, effort uh, or initiative, if you like, funded by Science Foundation Ireland, uh, which is investigating nanoparticles and the mm -hmm. use of nanoparticles um, 
I suppose, in, in a number of different areas. It's, it's quite a large collaboration involving uh, University College Dublin, um, Trinity College, um, University of Limerick, University of Galway, um, Coleraine University in Northern Ireland, for example. And there's, there's, there's quite a number of, of, of people involved in that, in that project. Um, outside Ireland, we have, again, a number of collaborations. University of Aberdeen in Scotland, we work with on respiratory diseases, and in particular at the moment we're looking at uh, COPD patients, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, um, taking samples, uh, treating the ex vivo with anti-inflammatory compounds and investigating them in our, in our biochips. Um, we are also working with uh, University of Washington and Seattle on a bacteriology application, uh, looking at E. coli, and um, that has a knock-on effect in terms of the work that we're doing in inflammatory bowel disease and other gastroenterology uh, uh, areas. Um, we continue to work with our, our customers. Um, and I suppose one of the main um, developments we've seen lately is a, a new area in uh, a new development of our system uh, where it's being used in malaria. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the University of Liverpool is uh, is looking at platelet adhesion um, from from a from the point of view of malaria, and uh, they have a number of sites set up throughout Africa. Similarly, we we've started working with. Uh, We've just sold some some biochips to the University of National University of Singapore. It's actually an alliance, an MIT Research Alliance, mm -hmm. where they're looking at uh, malaria as well um, in Thailand, and they're using our chips to study that as well. Um, so we we continue to work with our customers as well as having grants uh, with specific institutions as well. So great. Well, thank you so much, Vivian. I really appreciate no you taking the time talking with us. Thank you.